In Animal, the next leaps forward, in evolutionary terms, were in favor of radial symmetry and motility for a greater part of the life cycle, as well as a tissue level of organization that we don't see in Parazoa. The radiata are not a clade of animals. Like in other situations we've seen, they are at best paraphyletic, and there is significant evidence that the radiata is polyphyletic, which I'll get into. An even older name for the group is Slenterata, which you won't encounter all that often. This artificial group includes two monophyletic phyla, Tenophora and Cnidaria, both of which include organisms that are called jellyfish. If you are interested in marine biology, you should recognize that these animals, while aquatic, are not fish like tuna or bass or salmon, so those in the know refer to them as just jellies. Tenophora means comb carrier, and tenophores have the common name comb jellies, like a hair comb. They are radially symmetrical, but they are also simultaneously bilaterally symmetrical. In other words, they are biradially symmetrical. Here are a couple of shapes that are also biradially symmetrical, an octagon and a hexagon. I can draw a line that bisects them into two equal pieces, showing bilateral symmetry, or I can cut them like this to show radial symmetry as well. This is typical in tenophores, like the one in the image on the right. The combs in comb jellies are called teens, and they are comprised of rows of enlarged cilia that are fused together. The teens pulse rhythmically, synchronously, which gives these animals a very smooth and fluid type of motion, distinct from the true jellies of phylum cnidaria, which we will see in a moment. Another distinguishing feature of tenophores is the manner in which they catch their meals. Cnidarians have stinging cells which they use to subdue their prey, but tenophores use glue instead of venom via cells called coloblasts. And a final feature seen in some comb jellies is the presence of beautifully colorful and glowing structures within those teens that make them light up the seas. And that's another feature you can also see in the image on the right and also in this image. Ooh, ah. But not all tenophores have this psychedelic light show feature. For example, not this cannibalistic baddie. This is not a very large and diverse phylum, but it is interesting for another reason. Recent studies comparing whole genomes rather than just a few genes have provided evidence that tenophores are even more distantly related to other animal groups than previously thought. In fact, while I myself and others have rather dogmatically taught that sponges are very ancestral in many ways, there is evidence that tenophores may have diverged from the rest of the animals prior to the divergence of periphera. This would mean that several features that were assumed to be monophyletic may have evolved polyphyletically by convergent evolution. And some of that research was performed here on Auburn's campus. This leads us to the Cnidarians, the other phylum of the grade called radiata. This phylum includes the true jellies, i.e. not comb jellies, as well as sea anemones, corals, and a few other animals. Cnidarians are all variants of two basic body types, which is really one body type flipped upside down and slightly modified. We will draw the basic structure of a polyp and a medusa. This illustration shows most of the anatomical elements that we will need to know about. Cnidocytes, or stinging cells, are a synapomorphy of cnidaria. This illustration shows the structure of a cnidocyte before and after firing. Inside the cell, a venom-filled bladder called a nematocyst lies in wait. When an appendage called the cnidocyl is triggered, the nematocyst everts, or turns inside out, and fires into the victim of the attack. A thread coiled in the cnidocyte, uncoils inside the victim, and the venom is injected through the thread. Ouch. 
So that illustration was all very well and good, but wouldn't you like to see Nidocytes firing using very sophisticated photomicrography? Of course you do. So I'm going to end this video here and take up with the diversity of Nidaria afterwards.